here and now, and this is urgent. This is war. Here we are in the midst of a second war, which is part of a yeah. third world war, it would seem. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good um a good a good way of putting it. You have the Ukraine, you have the struggle right now in um uh in the West Bank, and who knows what else may jump off any 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 minute now. Hmm. You know, it's because of the West Bank, you know, and the confrontation in North there where I was in Nablus and in Jenin, which I passed through is that, you know, they shifted the soldiers from Gaza border to the West Bank in order to cope, you know, with uh, all the uh, confrontations there, okay? So they had about 12,000 soldiers in the West Bank, and uh, around Gaza, it would seem they only had the number of soldiers that were at that rave party. They were probably all soldiers, you know, having a good time. I saw a video of one uh, woman soldier, you know, wearing her military pants with just a bra for top, you know, smashed out of her mind on ecstasy, you know, dancing away there. Pretty good, too. And in the background is the Palestinian gliders coming in, you know, to, you know, attack the uh, military base that they were next to. They were from the military base. Well, you know, I I, I think that the defeat of the Israeli army on that day and they were defeated on that day. There was no, there's no doubt about it. Indicates the determination of those soldiers to let the let the years and decades of humiliation and oppression of mm. that community be thrown back in the faces of the army, uh, the army barracks, uh, wherever there were forces of oppression uh, or those who benefited from the oppression of the Palestinians, they felt it on that day and they still, they will never live down the humiliation that they suffered that day. It's an incredible revolutionary impulse, historic occasion. You know, it's unprecedented that, you know, such an oppressed people could be so strong at the same time. Uh, yes, I would add. Yes. yes. I would add that you know the the uh, failure of uh, the Israel state and the Israeli mentality is the psychological neurosis and and pandemic endemic neurosis complex, like in the sense of Alfred Adler, you know of you know infallibility, you know that they are the strongest, you know because they are the best and that they are superior because they are the strongest, you know, this sort of, you know, psychological loop that they have going there, you know, and they're a macho and macha, you know, like a mentality of a Spartan state. And well, they assume that, I, I, you know, yeah. that the enemy that they declare itself declared enemy would respect that and understand that they are subjugated and that they could not possibly revolt, you know, that they thought that they had instilled the psychological effect of defeatism amongst the Palestinians, which is what their intention is, from what I experienced in the West Bank. So they failed. They thought that they had succeeded on all fronts, and that they were, you know, impenetrable, impenetrable, impenetrable and infallible, and in, in, immune to any sort of, you know, international law, because they were sovereign. This concept of sovereignty is, you know, like incredibly fascist. And now they are, you know, in a government, except for one opposition leader, Lapid, who refused to join in the war cabinet, which included Blinken from the United States, you know, in the war cabinet, that they're going to eradicate, you know, the northern stretch, stretch of, you know, the Gaza Strip now, not even giving them much of a chance to leave, you know, to whatever, you know. And this was pre-planned, you know, I've seen the map, you know, where they had planned to send the Palestinians to in the Egyptian territory on the border, you know, with... Uh, Israel on the south there. Uh, you know, this has been planned, you know, since long time. And it was supposed to be planned together with, you know, the Egyptian regime, you know, of the old regime before the revolution from the Muslim Brotherhood. And now they're bringing it back. And this current Egyptian military regime 
you know, so far is not going along with it. They're not allowing, you know, the Palestinians to get into Egypt because they know if they get into Egypt as refugees, that they're never going to be allowed to get back into Gaza. And Egypt doesn't want to have, you know, uh, you know, a, a 2.3 million, you know, Palestinians, you know, in Egypt who are, you know, not subject to their law, <laughs> basically. And they're armed, uh, you know, like it would be, you know, a revolutionary, you know, uh, core to the Egyptian revolution itself, just like it was in Lebanon, you know, it would be a repeat, you know, so they can't, you know, sort of allow it, you know, for many geopolitical reasons like that. It's an incredible situation. And they're going, yeah, they started the bombing already. I'm so disturbed, you know, but we had this magnificent demonstration yesterday. That's really the solution, you know, to such, you know, stress and trauma is to go to a demonstration. There was more like 5,000 at least, you know, I couldn't count the number of people, you know, like I was doing a video you know, my, on my phone, you know, for it, you know, on Facebook, you know, you can find it there still. And, uh, you know, it was unending, you know, my battery ran out, you know, I couldn't, you know, film the whole thing. It was incredible. And all along, you know, people were chanting, you know, spontaneous indignation. And a majority of them were women, you know, like, because it's the women who are being targeted now. Huh. You know, like, incredible. And then the baby story, you know, like, it was all started by the settler confirmed by, you know, like, military media type. <laughs> and then, you know, the prime minister of Israel, and then it goes up to Biden, you know, and this is already the justification for genocide because they have no other choice. Look what they did. And as it turns out, you know, the babies that are being torn apart are the Palestinian babies now by 548 the last time I looked. Well, you know, I, I tell you something. Um, the imperialists and their imperialist allies in Israel, you see, there's an issue in the West that I think this is going to have make us confront. Um, you mentioned it. You mentioned very a few minutes ago um, the the concept of superiority, and we are victorious, and we're Spartans, and we do this, and we do that. Um, one analyst here in the U.S. shared with us on the internet that the Israeli army except for maybe it's quote unquote crack troops are averse to being injured. They're averse to injury. And I haven't seen that even among the Ukrainians or the Russians. I haven't seen that. They, they, they don't mind getting injured or dying really. Mm. So they're, 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 they're a different kind of warrior there than they are in, in, in Israel. Mm. I, di I didn't see the aversion to taking a wound or losing, losing a life from those militants who staged that attack two weeks ago. They, I, they, they had to have known they might not make it back, yet many of them made it back, um, amazingly. Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to injury and death, it's okay in the eyes of the United States, France, Great Britain. I don't know where Germany sits on this. They, they probably sit, feel the same way. Um, Italy. It's okay if women, children, babies, um, if the elderly, animals um, are wiped out with Israeli, with U.S. made Israeli bombs. It's okay. Their lives are meaningless. Whereas every re every report, be it just be it based on facts or based on lies that an Israeli is even wounded mm. in any kind of, in as part of the struggle mm. against Zionism. Any injury is perceived as a grave injustice. Mm. And that go, that to me, that goes back to the whole, at least in my lifetime, the ideal that the oppressor's, the oppressor's uh, life and property and human human life is more valuable than that of 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 the oppressed, mm. and that the oppressed have no right. The oppressed have no rights yeah. that the oppressor has to respect, yeah. but the oppressor has rights that the oppressed must respect. And to me, that is the hypocrisy of even within the opposition to the Israeli military assault. 
if we get hung up on, oh, I don't like Hamas. Oh, I don't like how they have prisoners. You can't get hung up on that. That's the wrong way, in my view, to look at it right now. Whatever contradiction you have with Hamas or with the military strategy, the whole situation wouldn't exist if Israel didn't exist. The basis of the problem is Israel and its Zionist settler occupation of the Palestinians and how they pit Palestinian against Israeli with their whole mindset and structure. Yes, no, this, really, is, uh, yeah. this is a whole no, other the, context, you know, to, to point to Hamas as being, you know, the, the national character of the Palestinian people, you know, and uh, and that every Palestinian is, you know, exactly the same as the leader of the Hamas, you know, his stereotype, you know, which is part of the white supremacist, you know, mentality that the Occidental mentality, Ashkenazi mentality has against the Orient, you know, including the Oriental Jewish, you know, Israeli population who are this you know, second class there or third class, who knows. But the um, Hamas is um, misrepresented, even amongst the left, it is misrepresented because it is not known that the charter of Hamas was remade in 2011. The initial, you know, like uh, uh, anti-Semitic, okay, uh, Islamic code that was written by uh, Yamani, you know, who was the... Uh, you know, wheelchair, you know, founder of Hamas in Palestine, uh, and who was assassinated by Israel uh, by rocket, um, you know, that has been replaced by the 2011, you know, charter of Hamas, you know, which is anti-Zionist, and it does not, you know, um, you know, target, you know, Jewish people for being Jewish. It is a political question, and they call for the uh, end of the Zionist state, but uh, their diplomatic uh, position which is now pertinent, very pertinent to a ceasefire, is that they're willing to recognize the state of Israel for the sake of negotiations, if Israel is willing to recognize, you know, Palestine, you know, so that they can negotiate, you know, otherwise they can't negotiate. You know, if Israel doesn't recognize Palestine, there's no negotiations. And the reason why they don't want to have negotiations is because they don't want to recognize Palestine because they want all the Palestinians to leave. This is this Nakba, 1948, all over again. This is a proof of what happened in the Nakba, you know, and any, you know, liberal Zionist, you know, who didn't think that it was real, well, it's real and it's happening now, you know, but they're still sort of, you know, caught up in this whole sort of the national chauvinist thing that the Zionists have propagated amongst Jewish people. I have to test it, you know, I have to go back to the Jewish Community Center, you know, next month in order to uh, see if I can get through the, you know, Zionist censorship and barrier at the front door, because, you know, you know, I've been liberated by, you know, the judge, you know, but I don't know exactly, you know, what any ambiguity is there, you know, if they could arrest me meeting because I'm coming too close, you know, to the office, you know, of the uh, plaintiff, you know, in my criminal mischief case. And who knows where that office is even, you know, like, and I'm not going there anyway, you know, but they still say, you know, like, I'm getting too close. <laughs> it's incredible, you know, like how bizarre, you know, like Kafkaesque, you know, this is becoming... And we haven't even set a court date yet. <laughs> that will be on the 30th of October. So the, you know, storm of media attention that took place, you know, both on Wednesday and yesterday. Wow, I've never seen that before. It was even more so on Wednesday, you know. Uh, both the French and English, you know, television medias, you know, which I don't even have a television, you know, like, and I don't even know what they actually disseminated, you know, but there was interviews with everybody. And they were going around, you know, like, you know, like, it was wonderful for them, you know, to get, you know, like, firsthand interviews with the Palestinians, you know. But, uh, so we've met a breakthrough here, you know, and also, there's an international revolt happening, too. The international vote of all of these demonstrations, you know, pro-Palestinians, the solidarity demonstrations calling for free Palestine, calling for the recognition of Palestine by the respective governments in which the demonstrations are happening all throughout Europe, every capital, even in France, you know, in spite of, you know, the ban on pro-Palestinian demonstrations in France. And in England, you know, they're trying to ban the Palestine flag. They're saying that the Palestine flag is supposed to be declared to be anti-Semitic, you know, like Corbyn was declared to be anti-Semitic. For no good reason. Incredible, you know. And then in North America here, and we've had this demonstration in Montreal. I haven't seen since the demonstrations against uh, the war in Iraq. This is huge. 
And uh, I, New York had, oh yeah, New York was filled. I haven't seen reports of other places as well in North America. But this well, is just... I, I, I want to comment on that. And this is um, this is this will probably be a this will probably be a different viewpoint. I think that the demonstrations are important, but they're not getting covered here. Hmm. There's no news reports of them. Period. None. And they're very small. Okay, so just like the, I mean, they are they are small. To me, a demonstration of significance is five thousand to half a million people. That's significant, mm -hmm. not because I like those numbers, mm -hmm. but there are three hundred billion people in the country. I want a demonstration to have at least one tenth of one percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want at least thirty thousand people. Mm -hmm. Because then that will be forced the media to generate interest. Mm -hmm. The media does not. I mean, we we have democracy now. We have Pacifica. We have other left or liberal left voices. But um, even a rag like Daily Cost, which is a online um, nonprofit, um, they don't cover the demonstrations mm. because they're pro the the reason that they don't is uh, um, they don't do international news. Oh no no no. They are too pro-Zionist. Oh, even see, the, see what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is that the demonstrations are important, but we have to figure out how do we make the demonstrations reach critical mass so it starts to change people's opinion. Uh -huh. The news media, the news media is pro-Zionist. Mm -hmm. They're not going to let the Palestinian cause be heard. Uh -huh. As far as they're concerned, you can carpet bomb the West Bank, I'm excuse me, Gaza Strip, and it's okay. Uh -huh. There is an implicit bias uh -huh. against the Palestinian struggle in the West, in my opinion. You showed it with the with the outrageous claim that the Palestinian flag is a sign of anti-Semitism. It is not. Uh -huh. But that's that's because the ideologues of the le of the West through Tel Aviv and London and, and Washington, D.C., have determined they have to demonize the Palestinian fight. Mm -hmm. So demonstrations are important. We should demonstrate. I'm not saying don't demonstrate. We have to, we have to determine, though, what is the purpose of a demonstration? What is, is, it, is it to get media attention? Is it to, corral, is it to organize our forces? I mean, whatever it is, let's make sure why we're demonstrating what we want the outcome to be. Because right now, media will not cover it. They will not know there's something in downtown LA today or downtown Denver or downtown San Francisco. Hmm. You might get a reporter. You might get a local, a local station to cover it. You might. Hmm. If you do, you're lucky. Hmm. They don't want it to be known because the United States and the West want to make sure that the rights of Palestinians do not ever come into play. Mm -hmm. For example, for let me give you an example. And I don't even want this, but why are there no airlifts of Palestinians out of uh, out of West out of the Gaza? Mm -hmm. you know I mean, why? You know, well, we gotta get them out of here. You know, we gotta show some support, right? Yeah. In, in uh um in um bring them to the USA. <laughs> exactly. Bring them to the USA. Yeah. Bring them to uh, uh Palestine, UK. Texas. <laughs> Palestine, where, Texas. Where, wherever, yeah. <laughs> wherever. I'm just saying that's not even something that you can even discuss. Yeah. So I'm saying when you have a situation where clearly there's a refugee crisis being created, clearly. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And no Western power, to my knowledge, I'm, I'm saying no power to my knowledge right. from China, Russia, to my knowledge, I could be wrong. Yeah. China, Russia, Australia, um, Canada, uh, UK, Germany, Italy, France, um, countries in, in Scandinavia, Norway, Sweden, um, you know what I mean? Uh, Hungary, I mean, you know, I mean, nobody's saying y'all can come here. Germany, 
Nobody's even offering. Hmm. Well, I'm saying when you see that, That's that like means a, these, are, these are international personas non grata. This reminds you're me of the Crusades. Welcome, you're not welcome you know? here. This is yeah. like the Crusades, you know, when it's reported that they, when they occupied Jerusalem, the blood of uh, Muslims and the Jewish people flowed together ankle deep in the in the alleys right. of Jerusalem. So, so that to me, that's if there's any reason to demonstrate, any reason to be on social media, if there's any reason to write, hope to get a letter to the editor written in a, in a paper, if there's any reason to have a Zoom meeting where that can't be Zoom bombed. Uh, is to promote the right of the uh, people of Palestine even to exist. Yeah, this is like right the uh, this is like the Christian uh, song, uh, "Onward, Christian Soldiers." So, here we go, marching on to war. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, and that's what's happening. And that's what's happening right now. Yeah. And, yeah. Just, and just keep that in mind that no country, uh, nobody has said you're welcome here. We want an airlift of people from here. We can house you for a couple of years. We got a place for you to live and get a job and make them whatever. But this is not what was happening to you. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm Palestinians, saying, just like the Ukrainians. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? No, no, the Ukrainians <laughs> could come around the world. No, around the world. Oh, yeah. Give them housing. Give yeah. them some money. Yeah. Give them school. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Where? Is that for Palestinians? It's nowhere. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is that's what we need to look at. Why is nobody in the world that I know of, and maybe we just don't, maybe we're not on the same wavelength as those back to back north negotiations? Why do that? They not have the right to get the help. I'm just saying, why don't they have the right to leave in that fashion? To live. Yeah. You would say even cut its subsidy to the uh, UNRWA, refugee relief organization right. for the Palestinians who was cut. Right. I mean, some, something somewhere. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's because even, and I think some countries might be a little reluctant. Oh, do you a supporter of terrorism? You can't support them. So but all see, of the you, you know, like the, the the censorship, you know, that you refer to, you know, that the pro-Zionist censorship that occurs, that you know they don't, you know, people don't even know that the uh, Palestinians are being genocided now, is yes. because of the uh, of the Christian Protestant, you know, hegemony, you know, that it has over the mentality of the culture, you know, here in Quebec, there's an exception because you know this is uh, an occupied territory considered to be an occupied territory by the Francophone Quebecois nation against the British Empire, which Canada is still in. And I think that, you know, the black nation in the USA, you know, would be able to understand, you know, the plight of the Palestinians. I would think that there's, you know, oh. a greater consciousness, you know, when it comes to the blacks. No? Let me tell you, let me tell you about that. There's, a, there's this black, um, a politician, Cory Booker, who's trying to organize black people against, the, against, um, against actually, the Palestinians by being anti-Hamas. He's a shrill of the APAC, the American Israeli uh, Political Action Committee. Uh -huh. He's gone on TV and say, I'm, I'm, I'm a black man and, and I'm against this and I support Israel. But you're right. I think if we go to the core of the core of the black nation, not the periphery, not the entertainers, not the sports speakers, no, not them, uh -huh. but the workers, the prisoners, uh -huh. the youth, the youth, whether the youth grew up in a two, uh, a two parent home, one parent home, grandmama home, or foster home, what's happening to Palestinians has never been missed by legitimate black organizations that are tied to freedom. Uh -huh. Yeah. We've always embraced them as our yeah. brothers yeah. and sisters, and always embraced them, and they've always embraced us. And that's why I'm saying this. Why do they not have the right to repatriation as a refugee to Europe or the United States? Because they're considered third-class citizens. Uh -huh. That's why. It's the only reason why, man. Yeah. They're not even considered worthy of being repatriated. Just kill them uh -huh. or let them live in a tent. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's what's I, going on. Look I think that the... Let me say something else to you. I'm here to interrupt you. There's a guy named Lindsey Graham, mm -hmm. U.S. Senator from South Carolina. He said recently, this is a religious war. Do what you can to wipe them out. Whoa. Yes, he did. I'm not, I'm not misquoting him. 
Yeah. Do what you can, whatever it takes, wipe them out. Yeah. In Hebrew, that's called a milchuma mitzvah. I predicted this one time and I was, you know, dismissed, you know, it means holy war in Hebrew. This is what, the, you know, the ultranationalists, you know, of the Zionists, you know, are doing. This is their holy war. So, you know, in Yemen, you know, the demonstrators called for a jihad against, you know, the uh, holy war of the Zionists. <laughs> it could be. Yeah. Um, and what is, and what is, I have a question. What is Saudi Arabia saying about this? Uh, uh, I, 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 or um, I, I don't know what Le, what Lebanese government, Jordanian government, Egyptian government. Do, do, can, can you give us any sense, or maybe yeah. uh, maybe you, I, I shouldn't ask you because why should you know and and not me? But I have I have not had a chance to study their positions, their their State Department statements, things in front, from the newspapers, etc. No, uh, the, it's, it's what they haven't said that's important because they haven't said that they're going ahead with normalization with Israel. They refuse okay. to recognize Israel now. They can't. You know, before they were negotiating, you know, uh, trying to see if Israel would, would, you know, stay out of, you know, like Sector A, you know, in the West Bank or something like that, some sort of concession in order to justify, you know, the Saudi Arabian recognition of Israel. But they didn't get that. And now, you know, uh, you know the and normalization you know, certainly cannot go ahead, you know, in the face of all the protests that are happening. You know, they would be exposed, you know, as being totally defunct and irrelevant and historically uh unnecessary you know by that point even to you know their own entourage you know they would you know like couldn't face a scandal like that no way this is you know epic very epic here and uh if Whoa. you know uh, israel that does you know send in the ground troops you know into gaza you know they're preparing the way you know because you know, normally you know their military strategy is to flatten the place first you know and then send in troops because the troops are, you know, the most precious thing that they have, you know, the pillars of the state and all that. Except if they get uh, captured. You're not supposed to get captured, you see, according to the Israeli military. So if you do, you're subject to the Hannibal uh, policy, you know, the Hannibal Code, which is that if you're captured, you know, rather than, you know, be, you being forced to be exchanged, you know, for Palestinian prisoners, you know, you will be left to die. And in fact, you know, they will actually bomb you. They've actually bombed, you know, already, you know, 13 uh, Israeli hostages have been killed by Israeli bombs just in this last week. I didn't know that. Incredible. Hannibal uh, Code is what it's called. It's supposed to be secret. But they will, you know, they couldn't care less, you know, about their soldiers' lives when it doesn't serve the interests of the state. It's a state so you're saying... So you're saying, therefore, there is a, there is a secret code that is the basis for the the activity of the Israeli army. That if a soldier is captured or wounded and left without support, that they will kill the soldier without, as opposed to the soldier being captured, to cared for, healed, but also held as a prisoner for exchange. I see. Oh, no, no, you know, no, uh, only if they're captured, you know, a, a, as a hostage, you know, then they're subject to being bombed. <laughs> okay. Hmm. You know, and, but then Hamas at one point, you know, threatened to uh, uh, cut the heads off a hostage if Israel bombed, you know, any civilians in Gaza. And Israel well, has, but they didn't have them cut off the heads, you know, so I think they well, backed yeah, off that, of that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I was going to say, since there have been mass bombings of civilians without question, and since those executions have haven't occurred, one must wonder two things: were the were the were the were the soldiers and those being held prisoner killed? That's possible. Did they decide to not do that and try another strategy? That's possible. I don't see one of, one one of the two because if, if they said they're going to do this mm -hmm. and they don't do it. Hmm. That means to me they either were killed in a bombing, the mm -hmm. people who are going to do it, as well as the prisoners, or they decide this is not a tactic we want to we want to use now. Let's do something else. Hmm. Precisely, and, yes. Because you know, with the Hannibal Code, you know, the, it was pointless. You know, like why kill a hostage when Israel is going to be doing it in any case? You know, like Israel has no places, no value upon the hostage. So for them to kill the hostage would have no effect because of the Hannibal Code. Thing. So I wish we, I wish we get this no I wish we I wish we get this no, well, I wish we get this known more what yeah. you just said because no that's important because a lot of things people don't know for example 
there's there's an analyst out of the Donbass. He's an American guy, and his view is that the geopolitics of of the Hamas attack were based on what you just said to undermine the Israeli Saudi rapprochement. Mm, that, yeah. that that was one of the reasons to make sure that Saudi would be under great pressure to not yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. That's true, you know, because at this moment, you know, why did it happen right now, you know, except that there was the holiday and the soldiers were partying and raving on tripping on ecstasy, you know, but, you know, the international context, you know, was uh, imminent, you know, that they were going to be discussing, you know, negotiations. So, yes, this stopped it for sure. Right. And what I'm saying also is that people on the left and the protests against the Israeli attack have to keep in mind the international context of what occurs here. Hmm. We, tend to, we tend to not have a good geopolitical analysis or outlook. We're just upset about what happened, which is good. But how do we prevent it and why did it happen? We have to talk about that because there's always a why to these things. There's always yeah. a why. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What I wanted to say before, you know, was that I could see, you know, how, you know, Black uh, people living in a ghetto that is occupied by the police force and to which they're subject to, you know, like, you know, being shot and killed, you know, for some unknown reason <laughs> is, uh, is, you know, very much like, you know, what they could perceive, you know, the Palestinians to be uh, subjected to, you know, especially in the West Bank, you know, that's what it is, you know, the military comes in, you know, like at any time, especially at night, you know, to pick up people and, you know, like uh, add to their collection of 5,000 prisoners. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, uh, you know, there's mass incarceration, you know, in the United States. How many prisoners are there? You know, like I saw a figure like 8 million or something like that. Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. We're going to find out, but it's a, hell of a, it's a hell of a lot. Million. And remember, also, the immigrants being held in U.S. prisons. Oh, pending detention deportation. Remember them? Oh, yeah. held, in, held in private prisons. Oh. Private prisons. Uh -huh. Immigrants held by the geo company uh -huh. i think they're their descendants of pinkerton or burn security for company so you, so you also have them private prisons also for, with that, that, that whole that whole migrants uh -huh. wow that's a lot of millions of people you know yep. that's that's like a yep. a whole mass of people that can form a revolutionary core if they if, if we could get to them and if 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 they can get out Yes. We have to get to them. Oh, the same thing with the Palestinians, same problem as the Palestinians, you know, like it's, it's very it's very parallel. It's, it's very parallel. I'll keep saying it's very parallel situation. Uh, there are yeah. the differences yeah. historically, but the same racism and classism and sexism and su superiority mm -hmm. that the Anglo that the American ruling class has over the black and the brown and the red nations. The same type of superiority and thinking and behavior and practice that these really that the really Zionists and their settler supporters have over the Palestinians is very similar. I, I would add, you know, like in, you know, on top of the Anglo white supremacism, you know, that was uh, carried into the United States as foundation, you know, there's also the the German white supremacism that is, you know, nearly the uh, an equal weight, you know, of population in the American population, but which has a much greater, you know, control over territory in the uh, central uh, United States. You know, this is a very, you know, strong, you know, like uh, two-legged, you know, form of white supremacism that is both Anglo and German uh, Prussian, the Prussian mentality, you know, of purity that Hegel talked about. It's uh, an incredible, you know, phenomenon in the United States. Uh, and it's and it's got you know strong legs, but you know a very weak heart, because uh, there is you know uh, the uh, degradation of uh, various uh, subnations that are treated to subhuman you know standards you know of human existence cannot be tolerated by these people, and uh, I don't expect that it will be. Uh, I can see you know that similar revolts as you know the Palestinians have conducted you know will also be happening here and elsewhere. Let's hope so. Yeah. This is good. Okay. Um, one wonders, you know, what's going to be happening in the week to come. You know, what, with two U.S. aircraft carriers, you know, off the coast of Palestine, you know, what, what is this? You know, like, are they that afraid of Hamas? So, you know, what's going on here? You know, like, yeah. let's see what's going to be happening there as well. Okay. And, and also, 
two U.S. proxy wars, ah. one led by Israel, one led by Ukraine, both getting money, both both now fighting for who's who is going to get the money and the arms. That's kind of that's kind of unprecedented, also. You know, like so pathetic. You know, capitalism is so such a selfish, you know, system that it you know destroys itself and eats itself from inside. This is just incredible conditions. How can this you know like world you know tolerate this? It's just not logical. Well, we have to bring it to an end. Yeah, we have to bring it to an end.